Hi, and welcome to uh, the Hershey Magic Online course. My name is Jack Trades, and uh, I'm going to teach you a couple of magic tricks today that uh, all involve a deck of cards. What we're going to do today is some, some basic stuff. I'm going to show you uh, basically stuff if you've never seen a deck of cards before, if you've never held a deck of cards before, maybe you've only uh, played card games, and, and maybe you're not very uh, aware of how to hold the cards, how to shuffle cards, things like that. So we're going to go over the very basic stuff. Okay? Uh, the first thing is how to hold the cards. When you're performing a trick, a lot of times with cards, one of the first things you're going to ask someone is to pick a card. Now, in order for them to pick a card, the cards need to be, you know, handled by you in, in such a manner. And you always want to handle them the same way, because um, later on you're going to force a card from the same spread. And forcing a card, of course, we'll get into later, is basically having someone choose any card they want, but really they're choosing the card you want them to choose. And all of this always has to look the same as if you were just letting them randomly choose any card they wanted. So if that's a little bit confusing, we'll start at the beginning. First, how to hold the cards. Um, the most common way to hold the cards is called what uh, um, most magicians refer to as a mechanics grip. A mechanics grip uh, comes from the term of card mechanics and card cheats and the way they hold the cards. Um, really, it's, it, when magicians are, are using this grip, it's, it's a little bit more modified. Um, con men and cheats and whatnot don't, don't have as specific a way of doing something um, as a magician does, because a magician does it to perform, a cheat you'll never see. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, a mechanic's grip is this. Um, the cards, uh, if you're right-handed, you'll have to follow me. If you're left, just reverse it. If you're right-handed, the cards lay in the palm of your left hand. Your thumb goes up the side. Your other three fingers are on the other side of the cards, and they're gripping the cards. They don't allow the cards to fall. And then your first finger comes across the top of the deck here and comes almost at the uh, corner of the cards here where your pointer is. So this is a basic mechanic script, and this is just generally how you will hold the cards. All right? Now, um, from here, when you want somebody to, to choose a card, um, you'll push some of the cards over with your thumb, and your other hand will come in and take those cards, and just applying a little bit downward pressure, you spread the cards with your thumb out, and that allows the spread of cards, and you get a nice big wide spread that way. So if you want somebody to choose a card, just like that. Um, another way that you can hold the cards that you'll see um, a lot of guys do um, is called a biddle grip. Now, biddle grip is done with the right hand. From mechanics grip, you put your thumb in the back of the deck with your right hand, your middle finger and your ring finger grab the deck at the top, pinky on the side, and your first finger curls over the deck up top here. This is a biddle grip. And we'll, I'll show you uh, what we use this grip for a little bit later. Um, but what we're going to go over first is we're going to go over a few ways to shuffle cards. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this. We're going to go over a couple of basic ones. I'm going to show them to you first, and then I'll explain them. Okay, uh, the very first shuffle we're going to go over is called an overhand shuffle, and that's uh, when the cards get mixed by being passed from hand to hand, just like this, and this allows the cards to get nice and mixed up. So how is that done? Well, it's, it's not overly difficult. Um, uh, basically, we're going to take the cards in that middle grip that we talked about, um, only instead of curling the first finger back behind the deck, it'll just go right over the deck. And instead of holding the cards flat, we hold the cards up like this. So the cards are at an angle where the backs are facing this hand at, a, at an angle. Um, we're going to let a few cards fall from the right hand into the left hand, pull the rest of the deck back, let a few more cards fall on top, pull the deck back, a few cards on top, and just repeat until the cards get mixed, just like that. I'll do it again. Cards like this. Drop a few, bring the rest of the pack back. Drop a few, bring the rest of the pack back. Just like that. You can also use the thumb to swipe the cards that you want to mix off of the deck. And that's an overhand shuffle. Another way to shuffle the cards is called a Hindu shuffle, which is uh, similar to the overhand shuffle because you're not uh, interlacing the cards, you're just mixing them again. The Hindu shuffle looks like this where the cards get mixed at the skinny ends of the cards as opposed to the wide ends of the cards. Um, the way we do that is grip the deck with your thumb, uh, middle and ring finger at the back of the deck closest to you so that you're holding the deck like this. And then this hand is going to come under the deck and pull cards with the thumb, middle, and first finger of the other hand off the top into the palm. 
like this. As the right hand draws back, the left hand pulls forward, and that brings little packets and mixes up the cards. I'll do it one more time here. Pull little packets forward from the front of the deck, holding the deck in the back, and that mixes up the cards that way, and that's called a Hindu shuffle. And you'll see magicians do that more often than you'll see anyone else do it. Um, the next shuffle that I'm going to teach you, which is, uh, again, fairly simple, but it looks a little bit better, um, is a standard riffle shuffle. Uh, this is the shuffle you'll see most people at card games do, the shuffle where they interlace the cards like this, shuffle them up. Sometimes they'll put a little flashy bridge into the deck as well. The way this is done, and this mixes up the cards better than the rest, is you're going to break the deck into ha in half, and you're going to put your thumbs on the inside of the deck. You're going to put your middle and ring fingers on the outside of the short end of the deck like this. Your top fingers curl on top of the deck, and you're going to bend both halves upward. And the way to get them to mix is simply to release one hand before the other, like that. And that allows the cards to get interlaced that way. And then you can push them together, and you've shuffled the cards. We'll do it again. Thumbs in the middle, ring in middle on the outside, pointer fingers or index fingers on top, bend the deck upward, and then just release with the right hand or the left hand first, and just interlace the cards that way. Now the way to add the bridge to that is once you've gotten the cards interlaced, there, you put your thumbs down where the two cards meet, and put some pressure on, and you bend everything up, keeping that grip underneath the cards, just like that. You can get that. And then the way to get them to fall into each other is to open the fingers on the bottom. It's hard to do it slowly, but once you uh, release the fingers that are holding on the underside of the deck, like this, they'll just fall into each other. And that's adding a bridge to a regular riffle shuffle, just like that. All right, so the thing, the first thing we're going to teach you today is a couple of, uh, as far as sleight of hand goes, is a couple of ways to force a card. Now, forcing a card is having somebody choose a card that you want them to take. It's a card that you've already decided you're going to do an effect with, so you've memorized the card, in this case, the Four of Clubs. So you've memorized that card, you know its placement, in this case it's on the top of the deck, and you want somebody to take that card. Um, this is really good for a very simple trick where you uh, pretend to be able to know any card in the deck that they choose simply by having them pick any card that they want. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. The first way I'm going to show you how to do that um, is called the Cut Deeper Force. All right, And the way that is done is the card is on top of the deck, and you hand the deck to a spectator, and a spectator in, uh, subsequently is the person you're doing an effect for. Um, You've already placed the card that you want to force on the top of the deck, and you ask them to cut a small packet of cards off the top of the deck. Cutting, of course, is removing a block of cards, and to flip it over. So they're going to take a small packet of cards, and they're going to flip it upside down and lay it back down on the pack. Then you can ask another spectator, you can ask the same spectator, to do the same thing, only to cut deeper, and cut a deeper pack. And they cut and flip over another pack. And then... To finish the force, you spread through and say, I'd like you to take the first face down card. You spread through the deck, and the first face down card you come to is, you guessed it, the four of clubs. So how does that work? It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. The card is on top of the deck, here. When you turn over the first small packet, I'll leave it sticking out a little bit so you can see it, it gets turned over upside down with the rest of the packet. When you take a larger block and turn that over, you're turning your first packet back to the way it began. So of course it's going to be the first face down card you come to because all these cards were on top of it. So there it is. And that is the cut deeper force. Okay, everybody got that? Should we do it one more time? We'll try the nine of diamonds. Take the deck, cut a small packet and turn it upside down, just like that. And if you would take a bigger packet, cut deeper and turn that whole pack upside down. Now I'd like you to spread through and just take the first face down card. And that first face down card should be, in fact, the Nine of Diamonds. So that's the Cut Deeper Force. 
The next force I'm going to teach you uh, uses one of the shuffles that we just learned, it uses the Hindu shuffle. And I'm going to teach you the Hindu shuffle force of the bottom card. It sounds really technical, it's really not. Um, basically, you're just going to have them choose the card that's on the bottom of the deck, and you've memorized that, in this case, the Nine of Hearts. But, you know what, for consistency, let's use the Four of Clubs again. There it is. So the Four of Clubs is on the bottom of the deck. And you're going to Hindu shuffle, like we did before, bringing top, small packets off the top, and you're going to say, as I shuffle through the cards, just say stop. And wherever they say stop, you're going to point to where you stopped, and you're going to show them the card that they just stopped you at. And of course, it's going to be the Four of Clubs. Now, how does that work? Well, again, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to see if you're watching close. If I shuffle the cards like this and say, tell me when to stop anywhere you want, and you say stop right there, I show you the card and I put it back into the middle, I've just shown you the card that I wanted you to take, the Four of Clubs. And the reason that is, is because if you remember, the Four of Clubs is on the bottom of the deck. And here, I've got the cards are being taken from the top of the deck. So every time I take a small block of cards, I'm leaving that Four of Clubs exactly where it is, like this. So when you say stop, wherever it is that you say stop, I'm going to point to the cards that I've just taken into this hand, and I'm going to show you the bottom card. Only now it looks like it's coming right from the center of the pack. So there it is. That's the Hindu shuffle of the bottom card. One more time. Say stop anywhere. They stop, point to the center of the pack, show them the bottom packet that's in your right hand. They've seen the card. You can now lose it into the pack and you force the Four of Clubs. All right, the very last force I'm going to show you, and this is probably one of my favorites to use, um, is called the Riffle Force. And the Riffle Force involves um, one thing we've learned so far and one thing we haven't. It involves holding the cards in mechanic grip, and it involves getting what's called a pinky break. So I'm going to grab the Four of Clubs out of here one last time. There it is. And the four of clubs will start here on the top of the deck. And I'm just going to ask someone to call out stop whenever they want. I'll spread through like this. They'll say stop right there. I'll have them take the card that they told me to stop at. And of course, it is, again, the four of clubs. So how does that work? Well, it's pretty easy. The way it works is you've got the four of clubs on the top of the deck before you start. I'll leave it face up for the explanation. And you're going to cut the cards in half. You're going to put half the deck into your left hand. Now I use what's called a swing cut, so we should go over the swing cut before I even go into the force. Holding the cards in the middle grip, which is the thumb in the back, again, the two fingers at the front and the top finger curled over, um, and the pinky on the side, you're going to use that pointer finger to lift up part of the packet, like this, using your thumb as a pivot point, and you're going to use the uh, index finger to also swing out past the middle and ring finger, the top packet of cards. So you pull up, swing out, and then you're going to drop that top packet into the left hand and drop the remaining packet on top. That's a swing cut. It's a little flashy, flashy and at speed it looks like this. So that's a swing cut. Just from the back, using the thumb as a pivot point, use your pointer finger to lift up, swing out and take that packet with the left hand and that's a swing cut. So the way we use it in the force is we've got the four clubs on top and we're going to swing cut half the packet into our right uh, left hand and we're going to put the other packet on top but when we put it on top we're going to keep what's called a pinky break which is a little break in the back of the deck here which keeps the two halves separate. From the front, it should be virtually invisible. I know you can see it with the upside down card here. From the back, what's happening is just a little piece of the, of the pinky finger, just a little bit of the flesh of the thumb, is keeping a space between the card you're going to force this packet and the top packet. That way, I know where it is. Now, this is exaggerated so you can see it on the camera. Normally, it would be very, 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 very small, very, very hard to see. Um, but that is a pinky break. So the way we get to it is we swing cut the cards over, get the pinky in there, and as we close the deck up in the front, just keep the pinky ready in the back. 
So now we're going to hold the deck here and we're going to riffle down with our thumb here. And we're going to have the spectators say stop whenever they want. And that's true. Wherever they say stop, you're going to stop. So if I riffle down and they say stop here, what I'm going to do is from the front, I'm going to grab the packet that they stopped at. From the back, I'm grabbing my packet of cards right over my force card. So it looks like I'm handing them the card that they stopped at, when in reality, I'm going to hand them the card that I want them to stop at. I'll show it to you from the back. They say stop right there. As you can see, we passed our card. I grabbed the front packet from where they said and the back at my break here. And I'm just going to lift up at my break and hand them the force card. Now, one more time at speed with the card face down, it looks like this. They say stop right there. I hand out the card. And again, that's the four of clubs. So that is the riffle force of the top card there. Um, that's uh, all I'm going to show you with the shuffles and the cuts today. Um, in a few moments here, we'll show you the uh, world's fastest card trick. So stick around. Okay, guys, uh, one of the things I want to talk about really quick um, before we go into any of the uh, tricks or anything like that um, is the difference in certain in some cards. Um, most cards uh, that are printed, most cards that you see people play with um, are a standard poker size uh, deck of cards. A poker size deck of cards is what most people are used to seeing. Um, they're a little bit wider than what's called a bridge size deck. Uh, I have a bridge size deck here to show you the difference. Um, a bridge size deck is just a little bit skinnier um, than a poker size deck. If you lay them on top of each other like this, you can see you get about a quarter inch to almost a half an inch of difference between the two. Um, so if, you're, if your hands are smaller, um, you know, for some of you younger guys out there, uh, you can find uh, bridge size decks at most drug stores. Um, any, anything that you're used to going to um, in the area. And you can find regular size playing cards just about every store you go into, any, any convenience store, um, supermarket, large chain stores, things like that. Um, so if you're more comfortable, feel free to, to grab a bridge size deck. Um, and then when you, when you get a little bit more proficient, uh, I recommend moving to a poker size deck. Because uh, the longer you're doing this, if you continue with a bridge size deck, your credibility will be questioned years down the line. So, but it, for, for practicing sake and, and for the, like I said, for you guys with the smaller hands, go out and grab a bridge size deck. Um, I know that uh, uh, my local magic shop in the area carries the bridge size deck. So if you check out Hershey Magic, they can even send you a deck along with an order or something like that. I'm sure they wouldn't have a problem. So uh, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna teach you a trick today called the uh, world's fastest card trick. Uh, I'm gonna use a standard deck of cards, um, a bicycle deck of cards. These are the most common playing cards that you see. And uh, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to have a card selected from the pack here. Uh, would you go ahead, reach in there, grab out a card. Thank you. Yep, show the camera. OK, make sure everybody here sees it. The camera can see it. And if you would, I'd like you to put the card back into the pack anywhere you want. Right there. OK, push it in nice and flush so I can't see it at all. All right. So everybody here has had a chance to see the card. I want to show you a little, little trick here. All I have to do is give a little wave and a little dust. And what happens is the card, if I found it correctly, should flip itself over inside the pack. Now, was the card that you chose the nine of clubs? I'm betting it is. So that's the world's fastest card trick. Now, how's that done? Well, it, I, it requires a little bit of setup to begin, but it's actually a very easy trick to do. Um, the trick to this uh, effect, ha ha ha, um, is to have the card on the bottom of the deck before you start secretly flipped over so that when you turn the deck over it looks exactly the same. And the reason I moved to a bicycle deck as opposed to the cards that I was using before is because the white border on a bicycle deck helps keep things hidden regardless of how the cards are flipped. As you can see that looks like the, all the cards are facing the same way when in reality the whole deck is face up. If I turn that over it looks exactly the same. If I were to do that with this uh, deck of cards here without the border. You can see the purple lines all going one way here, but when I turn the deck over, everything becomes kind of white and kind of gives away the secret. So you always want to use um, a deck with a, with a white border. Not in all cases, but certainly in cases where cards are being reversed. So how is the trick done? Well, like I said, we secretly reverse the card 
in the deck before we start. Normally what I do is I'll just leave a card upside down in the box. I'll do a couple of tricks um, with, a, with a regular deck of cards. I'll put them away, putting the deck on top of the upside down card in the box, if you can see that there, like this. And then later on I'll take the deck back out and this time I'll just add that reversed card to the pack. Now when I spread the cards out and I have somebody select a card, go ahead reach in there and select a card. While he's looking at the card, I make sure everybody else can see the deck and when I, when I, when I point to everybody else what I'm doing is I'm turning the whole deck over in order to be able to point to everyone. So I say show it to everyone. Now the cards are flipped over. I take the deck back into my hand and now I've flipped the deck over. So when I have him put the deck back in anywhere, he's really putting it in face down of a face up deck. When I close it up, square everything together like this, I say now everybody remember the card and I say watch, all I have to do is give a little magic dust or a wave and I've just, I've turned the deck back over, flipping everything over including the card that he put in correctly, right there. Now when you spread through to show this, you can spread through pretty far to show the card is magically flipped over. Just don't spread all the way to the end or you'll reveal the secret of the trick and you don't want to do that. Last thing you want to do is show them that card that you had at the bottom. So very, very quickly I'll go over it with you again. The cards are all face down to start. Somebody reaches in and selects a card here. While they're looking at this card, I'm making sure everybody else gets a chance to see it by instructing him to show everyone. That turns the deck over. The card is then returned to the pack, again being returned face up, uh, face down into a face up pack. We square it up. I say, did everybody get a chance to see it? That allows my hand to turn over again, like this. I take the cards again, little magical wave, and I spread through to show the one card that's flipped over. And that's the world's fastest card trick. Um, some of the uh, effects and tricks that we're going to learn, uh, you can find in a book called Mark Wilson's Complete Course in Magic. That is this book here. Um, the trick, uh, world's fastest card trick in here is known as um, automatic card selection. Um, if I remember correctly, you can even find it on page 31. Um, I definitely recommend this book. This is a compendium of every type of magic you could possibly want to learn from cards to coins to ropes to just about anything you can come up with. It's a fantastic book for beginners, so if you don't have it, go out and get it. It's worth every penny you spend. Um, more than positive, you can also find that at Hershey Magic. So there's the world's fastest card trick. Enjoy it. Um, I know I do. It, it looks like a miracle when performed. So uh, have fun with it. And remember, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. I'm Jack Trades with Hershey Magic.